That was a deer in the headlights. Watching it replay on the other screen was just as fun. <laughs> no, it's been so long since I've got to do that. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the insanity we call Live Coding Happy Hour. This is where we get around and show you some stuff on the platform. I like to call this the antithesis of a well-polished demo. As you can see right from the onset, it is unscripted. We are going into this with a little bit of knowledge and a goal. And we'll see where we can go from there. Let's start with introductions, starting with that man. Hi, everyone. I am Earl Duque. I am a senior developer advocate. I press buttons. Brad. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Brad Tilton. I am on the outbound product management team for our next experience products, including UI Builder, which is what we're going to talk about today. And hello, everybody. My name is Maria Gabriela Ochoa Press Wector. A lot of you may know me as MGOPW, and I am on Brad's team. And my name is Chuck Tomasi. I'm on Earl's team. <laughs> Same title. How about that? Okay, it's live coding happy hour, so we have to cover what our happy hour includes. Earl, same order. What are you drinking? So you know me. I usually am drinking something hard or some random, an actual drink, but this time I have to drink just a regular ginger ale. Right after the stream, I am making the eight-hour drive to Southern California, so I can't drink right now, but I'll drink a ginger ale for now. Ouch. So, Brad? Feels like poor planning. Um, hey. I, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of live streaming, but not a lot of drinking while I live stream until today, so uh, I broke out this uh, hazy IPA from Big Country. It's very tall, so we'll see how much of it I get through. What's the ABV on it? Uh, I think like seven. It's not terrible. That's not bad. Okay. Bad. Traditional life coding happy hour. I break the mold by bringing in wine, but I wanted to do something cool this time. So I asked my husband to find me something awesome, but he thought that yesterday was life coding happy hour. So he rushed in the room halfway through a meeting, trying to throw me a beer. So, he <laughs> had <missed> in time. <laughs> so I have a. Liney shum summer shandy. Oh, summer summer shandy. shandy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from Chippewa Falls. That was, that's big stuff when I lived in Wisconsin. Any more lore you got for us, Chuck, about it? Well, so my buddy and I, as we, were, we now live in Phoenix, we used to live about three blocks away from each other in Wisconsin. And we got on this Southwest plane, and I gave him a drink voucher, and he says, I'll have a Lineys. And the flight attendant had no idea. She thought it was a dirty word or something. <laughs> No, the line in Kugel Summer Shandy. I have lots of useless facts in my head. I am <laughs> drinking water. I'm not driving, but I just need oh. to stay sober tonight. <laughs> Our guests are disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> they showed up. They're doing the work. They deserve a drink. So let's get started. What are we working on today? That's right. Who's driving? Oh, it's me. <laughs> That's my screen. Why is it? I started oh, sweating. Frozen. That was impressive. Or did it? There we go. This, yeah. This is my right. eighth live stream of the week. I'm getting used to all the buttons. Yikes. <laughs> I, mean, I think that's a record, Brad. I don't think anybody's done that before. Done what? Sorry. Eight live streams in a week. Oh, I've only yeah, done, that's... this is my, my third. So Earl's Earl's done all that Twitch stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Going nuts. Three yeah. on this channel, five on the Twitch channel. Even when I was doing community live stream, like every day, it wasn't this bad. 
All right. Technically, no, this is one of the last week. This is the second to last week that we have content for the Washington DC calendar. Oh. So we're going, we're going out with a bang. It's right up yeah. there in the corner. We're about to get going into out. Q2 store release. Y'all ready for that? Going out we with are. a super bearded week. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I'm pouring my beer. I thought you uh, said it was a super weird week. That too. Yeah, either way. If you've been watching the Twitch stream, it's been getting kind of weird. We had fun today, okay? I think we had a lot of fun today. Oh my goodness. I'm still All right. Here. Let me tell you what we're doing. Uh, so I am writing a CreatorCon lab uh, for my 10th CreatorCon. Um, I think I, I have written a lab every year but one. Uh is what I realized in most years, multiple labs. Uh, but this year, uh, we're going to do a lab. It's I'm building a killer single page experience, I think is what we, we've called it. Um, but this is going to be like a note taking app. Uh, and so what I wanted to do was do something that was not a workspace or a portal. Um, so this is an app that you could put in uh, your instance that lots of people could use. Uh, and, you know, I think there's lots of opportunities for this. Um, so what I, what I did was I took one of the apps that we ship out of the box, uh, and I think it might have been, so this looks like plugin manager. I don't think it was, or app manager. I don't think it was app manager that I copied uh, for various reasons. But uh, I was like, you know, it's probably not too hard to create an app that looks a lot like all of the different experiences we're shipping out of the box. So. That was the goal. Um, so I have this uh, thing that kind of works. It's not showing all of my notes for some reason. Oh, it's because I still have this in there. Um, so anyway, I've got this uh, notes app uh, that on the back end, it's just a fairly simple table. Uh, and um, what we're gonna do is create a front end for this table and, and make it something that uh, somebody might actually wanna use for note taking. Um, and if you want to, uh, yeah. Earl's going to help me posting stuff in the chat. If you want to see the start and beginning of this application, check out the academy that Earl's going to link in the next Experience Academy, where we started this by copying, like he said, the template of the page from another page. And then we've also done on the same channel on You and I Builder Live, we've been building this app over the past couple of weeks. And uh, we worked on it some yesterday. And now this is part two. That's right. And there's some links in the chat around UIB being difficult. And I do want to talk about that a little bit because I think the Washington version of UIB is way different than the Quebec version that I learned on <laughs> and easier to use. And then also UIB is also like it's just a page configuration tool. Uh, and so uh, workspaces are a lot of the pages that you'll be working with, but workspaces have a lot of their own, um, you know, metadata and everything like actions and, you know, lists and things that are not really UIB. They're, they're really part of workspaces. Um, so if you're just looking to build like a custom UI experience, I think UIB is definitely worth taking a look at for something like this. Uh, it's something you have to use to customize workspace pages. Uh, but I think it is a good choice uh, for, you know, building out custom apps like this. Um, so just for more background, uh, the labs that I've done at, at CreatorCon have always been some sort of UI or mostly been some sort of UI based thing. My very first lab was before Service Portal came out. There was a lot of buzz that Service Portal was going to use Angular. So I was like, I should use Angular. I was building a lot of CMS portals on Jelly at that point, if anybody remembers uh, those days. Uh, and I was like, I should learn Angular. And so I I built out like a to-do app on Angular on UI pages. Uh, and so from there, kind of built out lots of different service portal and Angular and, and now UI Builder based things. And I can say that UI Builder is, is my most enjoyable uh, front end building experience uh, out of all of the different experiences I've used uh, in service stuff. So not not true for everybody, but I do like it. And if I can add to what Brad just said, just my two pennies on top of the stack. Um, I used to be a senior portal developer working at Partners before I joined ServiceNow January of 2023. I literally was so scared of UI Builder 
because it, it was coming after my baby portals and I had never touched it before until this job. So I came up with a great idea of how can I learn while helping others learn? And we started the show, You and I Builder Live on the same channel on Thursdays at 4 p.m. where we go through it and we try to do something in UI Builder. And it's literally me asking Brad a whole bunch of questions until like eight months in when I finally start driving. So if you're interested in learning and getting started with UI Builder and you want a fun, casual experience like this show, you should totally check out You and I Builder Live. We base it off of Live Coding Happy Hour, but we just don't get to drink because it's a Thursday. <laughs> and it'll only take eight months to get comfortable with it. Then and there's I'm already 21 episodes. Yes, we do uh, every we do it two times a month on the second and fourth Thursday of each month at 4 p.m. Eastern. And you should come over even next time. It's we answer a bunch of questions. It's very open, very fun. We succeed about 80 percent of the time. So you really get to see how it really is, just like this show. Yeah, And that's and my soapbox. Thank you. At some point, we're going to add descriptions to the episodes, too. So that'll be nice. <laughs> wow, Brad. Yesterday, you called me out on not reading documentation. I, and today, I, you call me out on not doing the descriptions yet. I didn't say anyone's name. I just said we are going to add descriptions. One I day. Heard, yeah. I think I heard that a spreadsheet with all of the descriptions have already been made for you, too. I think it, someone just needs to um, approve them. I think that's what I that? Sorry, I'm going under a tunnel. I think Brad should start doing the dev stuff now. I vaguely oh. remember that. Anyway, oh, she went through a tunnel. App. Whoops. What? <laughs> <laughs> we are going to do some development at some point. Uh, so here's the app. It's note taking. So I've got a list of notes here that are pre-populated. I can click on one. It's going to create me a modeless dialogue window. I'm zoomed in too far. Oh, that's something to note about modeless dialogue windows, I guess. We'll fix that in a minute. Uh, but uh, we've got our, our notes here. I can save notes, uh, and then I can do other things. We're going to have to refresh to get that up the screen. Uh, and so I could create a new note. If I do this, it's going to let me create a new note here, and I can add stuff here uh newest note because uh, then we'll save it and it closes the modal and we have our newest note here anyway this is a little note taking app um i wanted to kind of show some of the new features so what we're going to do is um we are going to add some extra filtering here uh so uh i'm i'm doing some filtering like i can search notes hold on i have to fix the thing it's I, I did some category filtering here, and uh, I forgot to take it off before the show. If you're wondering how I build labs, it's a lot of randomness until I get serious <laughs> about it. All right. So now we should see a lot of notes. There we go. And my pagination only kind of works, um, but it sort of works there. Um, but I have a search here, so I could say 20 and it would show us a note so it is uh, a sort of working app uh, at this point um, but uh, what i want to do is uh, so we've got searching we have some sorting uh, but i want to add some really advanced filtering to this uh, just in case you want to do some crazy filtering uh, and it'll be really useful uh, if you want to know how to use like our condition builder component and things like that um, so what we'll do is we will look at, uh, how this works and then look at how we can add a filter. Um, so basically we, we, we do have a lot going on at this point. Um, but for the most part, we've got this lookup notes data resource. Uh, and I, one of the things I really like about the Washington release is how flexible the new modeless dialogues are. Um, so again, we've changed how this looks down in the corner here, uh, and this pops up in a modeless dialog. And sometimes I want this to take up the whole screen. Uh, and so if we look at the conditions, what I'm doing is uh, I'm saying, you know, the logged in user, we're only to pull their notes and then title contains the search term. So whenever I search. And then what we're also doing is I'm setting an, a, a sort field. So I showed uh, created, created on and updated on are the two sort fields. 
by default we're doing updated on and then we're also doing uh the sort order so ascending or descending by default it's descending here um but ideally what i want to do is really expose the complete condition builder to the people using the app um, I, I think uh you know using lists and using that big condition builder is, is kind of one of the one of the killer features in service now uh I, I try not to use the killer word too much, but there it was. Um, so it, there we go. All right. I um, like that you keep showing off the modeless window pop-ups too. Every time it's up, you're like dra slowly dragging it left and right. I know. I, I can't help it. I just move it around. <laughs> it's not a modal. Modal so restrictive now. I can't handle it anymore. Makes me makes me sad. All right. Um, so this is, uh, the notes, we've got a repeater there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, <clears throat> let's, so task one is we want to add a condition builder and show and hide it. Uh, uh, so we want to add a condition builder and show and hide it. And then task two is going to be, I want to take that condition from the condition builder and apply it to my data resource so that it works against all my notes. So let's do task one first, because I called it task one. And we'll add a container in here. Um, so generally, when I'm adding uh, containers and um, components, I'm usually doing that uh, in the content tree here, uh, because <clears throat> it just allows me to be more precise. Uh, I don't always know where I'm clicking when I move my mouse around in here, um, but yeah. So let's add, I think it's, is it called condition builder? Let's see. Ooh, it is. Look at me. Um, so we get a full condition builder here. And so this is not a connected component. Oh, it actually is sort of connected. Uh, it is kind of a connected component. But what it does is you give a table name and then it knows what fields to expose and how to work with that table. And, but its outputs are just firing events and telling you, okay, this is the encoded query that somebody set. And so we wanna take that encoded query and then apply it to the data resource that builds out uh, our list of notes here. Um, so the first thing we need to do though, is we just wanna show and hide this condition builder and so let's just leave it the way it is. And we need a new client state parameter that we're gonna call, um, let's say builder visible. Uh, let's just use the whole word, why not? Uh, so condition builder visible, whoop, that was, we're gonna do a Boolean Boolean, Boolean, and we'll say false is the default value. All right, so that's there. And then now we're going to go into the condition builder itself and then set its visibility. Um, and I'm actually going to set the visibility on the container that holds it instead of the builder itself, because I think this will work out better for us. Uh, and so, and this is just, a, I can set it true or false uh, statically, uh, but I can also use uh, dynamic data binding and hit the little icon. And so now I can use my client state parameter. I can use data. My dogs are barking. It's great. <laughs> uh, I don't see that option on the screen. I'll add this up here. These dogs barking, condition builder visible. <laughs> So we added that. Uh, so this is the new dynamic data binding that we got in the Washington release. Yeah. Um, so we can see that that's there. This is so much better than the way it used to be. Uh, but the cool thing is you can see the value that it's passing as well. So it's passing false. And I'm just now realizing uh, that component visibility works uh, opposite. So it's hiding or not hiding. So this should really be, we should, let's do the other way. Condition Builder Hidden. You're going to rename it? I think we can rename it, and I think it'll still work. <gasps> How dynamic is it? Let's see. 
Let's go hidden. I like that it didn't work the first time. We learn more that way. Oh, except we gotta we have to be consistent there. Condition builder hidden. And no, it didn't it didn't like it. So that's fine. Let's change it out. There we shout, go. Shout out to uh, the several of us in the chat encouraging each other for looking for careers and taking the CSA and all the different things. Nice. Cool. The reason why a couple of us are quiet um, on the stream right now is because it's a very lively chat actually right now. So that's awesome. CSA is great. Take it. We're having fun distracting people from the educational content, just sending out hugs yeah. and uh, loving each other on chat. I'm riveted. Keep going, Brad. <laughs> It's all right. I've worked with Gabby for a while now. I, I get it. <laughs> I can't even deny it. He's not wrong. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Yesterday, um, I was chatting with the chat again on our show, and I go, hey, for those of us who are totally paying attention, what was the thing you just said? Asking for a friend. It's it's good. People, people get lost. It's fine. Something about funnels. Funnel. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, paintbrush. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we hid that. Let's, so let's just save where we're at and, and look at the page. Uh, so you, you absolutely can use the preview to look at things like this. Uh, and so the preview actually gives you the page you're looking at in UIB, even without saving it, it's going to show you what you have created there. So we know that we've added the condition builder component and it's not here. So that's, uh, that's good because we hit it. So now, uh, how do we want to show the condition? We builder? need a little funnel icon or something. We could use a little <laughs> funnel icon. Cause we have a new feature with icons or something, don't we? We do have a new icon feature. Do I want to use, let's use, I think, yeah, we we'll use an icon button. I think we can make that work. So let's put it here. And we'll add it after this button three. I would love to have a funnel with an X through it. That's all right. So let's go icon. Uh, you can we'll load your own icons now, too. Button iconic. We can load our own icons. I'm going to use it. Can you find button. out? No, we're not going to draw a funnel with the line through it. <laughs> uh so yeah the new feature is this interface is a little different we used to only show like five in a list and now we show more than five what is that seven 30. times uh, 49 yeah so uh and then you can add your own so uh all good so let's look at a funnel ENGs, svgs what are those you know outline i don't know i'm sure they're svgs uh, but I think when you add, you can add uh, lots of different things. Animated GIFs, because Earl wants animation. Of course. Always. Um, so we will use this button, and we'll just toggle. We'll just use the button to toggle it. Uh, the button doesn't need to change. So we're going to add an event handler to the button, and all it is going to do is toggle that condition. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to do it dynamically. Um, and I think, now we're just going to do it like this. I'm not typing. There we go. I think this will work, but let's see. <laughs> Well, that didn't work, but let's see if this will just let us do the opposite of, oh yeah, they're not, that is a, is that a formula? Is there really a not? Huh. There's not a not? Nice. There is a not. Oh, there's a not. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Uh, my bow tie doesn't even have a not. I like that. <laughs> I tried to hack it. <laughs> I did. I did get the joke though. Uh, all right. So, what's what is this episode? It's a lot of tomfoolery. 
<laughs> That's a new one, Errol. <laughs> Had to move a little closer for that one. If, if you could tie the bow tie doing that, I think that may be a future challenge. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, take a drink when we distract Brad. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I was laughing too hard. I can't do it without looking. <laughs> All right. So when we hit this button, we should get the condition builder to show up. Hey, it did show up. Nice. Yay. It and now it's there. Oh, All right. Nice. I hate this white part. Uh, I missed it. I'm going to have to go back and rewatch. <laughs> all right. The spacing's bad. We need to fix that. Um, we'll do it kind of a, a dirty way with the margin here. So create note is your action. Okay. And the that's for displaying it. Gotcha. Yeah. So this just displays the icon our filter here. Yep. All right. Ooh, so that professional. Task number one completed. Ultimately, I would like the label to change. Sure. I don't know. I don't know that there's a good icon. I, somebody make us a filter with the. Well, line what does it do in the in the you know platform UI? I don't think it changes. Or does it go well, solid? I think, or arrow. I think it's a down arrow in the platform. If only we had a graphics person on our team. Hmm. What Jillian just said in the chat, though, really is what resonates with me about UI Builder. Like, can you imagine trying to make such a clean looking, pretty interface in a service portal that quickly? Like, yeah, it's possible. Or even worse, in you know, some full stack thing where it, it, this would be really hard and painful. I best yeah. I can do is uh, 48 billable hours and three mental breakdowns, Chief. Right. That was always take, my favorite. It would take yeah. quite a while to do what we just did. So, and this is like, you will get to this point in this lab within two hours in the lab. Um, so this is all doable. It's fairly straightforward. Um, you know, there are parts of UIB and workspaces that are not that straightforward, but something like this works pretty well. All right, so that was task one. We got it to show up and hide. Uh, and now so you we're going to do what? The, you said when you, when you, it fires an event with the encoded query, where does, where does it fire the event? Or are you going to put in like a run button or execute or we're getting there? Okay. It's one piece uh, at a time. Yeah. So, so I, I guess thinking about that, uh, UIB is all event driven development. So, yep. um, we're not. You know, when you think about um, maybe not service portal, but like jQuery and things like that, where you're really doing a lot of DOM manipul manipulation, your your script is um, like orchestrating everything that happens on the page. So you're saying, go into this thing and do this and then do this other thing. And so with event driven development or reactive development, uh, as they call it, uh, what's happening is there's just lots of events firing <laughs> all the time and you're reacting to those events. Um, and so that is what, that's the kind of paradigm that UIB is built on. You just, and, uh, was, yeah, I'm so trying to so, capture Gabby's mind being blown. That's what we're doing here. Yeah. Is that why it's called react? And oh I my God. Why it's called react. No, it's not a thing I've known for like a long time, but we wanted to see your reaction. <laughs> nice. nice. Um, yeah, so UI builder. So what we're going to do, because we want to work with the condition builder, uh, UIB has this thing where you can say, uh, look, I know that in real, like in real life, this is going to get hidden, but when we want to work with it, so we're going to say false for now, even when I, so when I look at the page, it's not going to show up, but now when we want to work with it, it's there. Um, so let's take a look at the condition builder. There's some stuff that I don't want in this condition, condition builder. Uh, I don't think I need this action bar, which is the thing at the top. It also has a white background that's not like padded very well, which kind of bugs me. Um, and then we're doing sorting differently. So we're not going to do sort by. And then there's no related list here. So let's hide the related list section. Oh, cool. Um, 
What's filter overview? I don't know. Editor description. Ooh, I like it. Let's keep it super clean. Uh, I, I'm okay with dot walking. So let's save it and see how that looks in the runtime. Oh, that looks pretty clean. This looks like a normal ServiceNow experience, uh, which is one of the cool things about this. You know, we we mentioned it already, but um, you know, this this really looks like something that we might actually ship out of the box. And if if our designers heard me say that, they would. I'm I'm sure I've made about ten different uh, design, uh, you know, bad design <laughs> decisions already. So like this probably doesn't pass. I've got squared corners and rounded corners. Anyway. <laughs> It, thematically, it looks okay. You heard it for, here first. Brad is shipping a product. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, so yeah. So what we want to do? Let's let's first uh, make sure uh, that what we do in the condition builder, we can get some sort of encoded query out of it. So I have a client script called logging that I pretty much always have available to me. Oh but we're not going to use it right now. All right, we're, we're going to use the oh. next experience dev tools because they will also do this for us. And we talked about them yesterday, and so we should use the next experience dev tools. So let's see how this, uh, how this thing actually works. So I'm going to fire up my dev tools here. It is a Chrome extension called next experience dev tools. I'm sure someone can put the link in it's the chat. It's already in the description, buddy. Nice. Uh, let's go to the inspector. We're going to go actions. And I'm going to go to the very end. And we'll give it 100 per page. All right. And so I am going to, let's say, I didn't give it a table name. So first, we're going to give it the right table is notes this one all right so now we're gonna do this oh, some chat about the browser extension so the next experience dev tools is an official service now browser extension that we launched in august it's been updated a couple of times since then uh, we did a whole show on it yesterday, all the new stuff that, that came out uh, in the March timeframe. Uh, but if you're doing anything with workspaces or UIB, uh, you absolutely should have this browser extension. Uh, it has a lot of uh, troubleshooting and, and all sorts of things that are really helpful. So what we're going to do is uh, let's, so if I click the label, I should get some new actions that show up. The actions, uh, so this is, pretty chatty. Um, so there's a lot going on here. You can do some filtering, um, but we could probably find our button clicked event in here somewhere. Maybe, maybe not. All right. So we're going to go ahead and say, let's just say category is, I think I have a personal, right? Yeah, personal. All right, so from there, it should have generated a new something. Why don't you clear it? Uh, I could clear it. That is something I could do. <laughs> but I already did the thing, so. Got it. I like that Gabby said, or, oh, I did it. <laughs> Drink. Oh, man. I like that Maria Gabrielle said, um, why wouldn't you clear it? And then Brad says, I could. <laughs> it doesn't say why. I just want to do this the hard way. All right. So I think this is what we're looking. So there's a couple of them here. We had now condition builder encoded query set and then encoded now condition builder connected. I think these are the same thing. But the cool thing is I can see all of the stuff that's available to me from the event and its payload. And so in the payload, we can see that I have a value property that gives me the encoded query. Mm -hmm. um, so this is one of the best ways to know when you're working with a component you're not familiar with. Uh, this is what's available to me when I work with that component. I think I can also change this. Uh, where's Wolf when we need him? 
I'm I think you have to clicking. click on the actual uh, payload title, like the right here. Yes. See, it turns into a. That just what? collapsed it. Oh okay. no. Let's see. I'm double clicking so fast; it's not working. It's all right. Can you do it via your the regular Chrome extension, uh, Chrome Developer Tools? Uh, those are dead to me. I'm, we're only using. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, what we did before was with the properties, though, so that that. Yeah, that not payload. Does. Yeah, so it, I guess it makes sense that I can't edit the payloads because it doesn't really matter that much. All right, so we can see that uh, payload.value is going to give me uh, the encoded query. So it makes sense that I should be able to use that encoded query to then filter uh, the list of results I get. So this is where, uh, for my lab, it's going to get complicated for me to figure out how this is going to work. Uh, for the purposes of what we're doing here, uh, it won't get that complicated. But right now, uh, we have um, some more, uh, um, I guess we're doing some more specific querying here where we're saying title contains, user is. Uh, but what we want to do is just take the output of that condition builder and apply it uh, whole hog. I can't think of a better way to say that. Uh, that's a Southern thing, uh, to this conditions here. Um, so I think we need a client state parameter to hold that. Um, so when we talk about event driven development, uh, we are holding lots of things in the pages state. So if you've done reactive de react development, you know, that, uh, all of their components and everything has state, uh, and the same thing with our page. Um, so UI builder page, you can think about it as a big component. We actually call it a macro opponent uh, and it has its own state. And so the client state parameters are the state properties and this is how we kind of manage state. So if you need a value from something uh, that you're going to send to something else, uh, that is the place to hold that. So we're gonna call this uh, no query. So in a way, it's sort of like a list of variables or. Yeah, I mean, it's it's know. not. Yeah, it's not too different from like flow variables or workflow variables or okay. um, display. What's the client variables? What do we call the display business role? Uh, G scratch pad. Scratch pad variables. Yes, there we go. OK. Um, I, I even said that word right before you asked the question. And it reminds me um, when I first became an administrator, I uh was struggling with querying and a friend of mine taught me andrew taught me that if you right click the breadcrumbs and get copy query you get a string that you can use in your glide queries and i was like awesome and then for the next three years in interviews i proceeded to say that i had no idea what encoded queries were it's turns using them yeah and the whole time and, and someone called me out on it on an interview when they sat me down to do the code part of it. And they're like, that's an encoded query. And I'm like, oh, so about that. I do know about these. Turns wow. out. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this, this whole property on the data resource, and we're just going to bind directly to it. So in the end, what I'm going to have to do is do a bunch of work, probably with some sort of client script uh, that builds out this uh, this uh, encoded query for me. I have also noticed that double clicking and clicking on the little icon here doesn't always work to add the uh, whatever you're doing up here. Sometimes you have to drag it. Uh, so if that's not working for you, try dragging it. My is that like an, a known thing or a, a bug? Uh, is it is it a bug? Is it or is that just how it works? Who knows? It sounds um, like a pack pack error. All right, so I I think uh, I think this should work. Let's see. We're gonna do, I'm doing a hard refresh. So this was a, a command shift R. That is uh, the only way I refresh when working with UIB. Uh, UIB does a ton of caching, uh, so it's always a good idea to do a hard refresh or clear your cache every now and then. 
Um, but let's go ahead and let's see. Uh, let's say, let's do a kind of a crazier one. So create it on today. This is a thing that uh, we're not populating the client state parameter, I just realized. Uh, oh. But create it on today is a good, um, is a good thing to do. Uh, this is, you know, date stuff is not easy to do from scratch. So using the condition builder and just applying it to your data is kind of nice. Um, so that's a good thing to do. Uh, but we do need to actually... Uh, set our client state parameter. So uh, I think our component only has one event. Uh, so if a component has more than one event, you can click on add event mapping, you'll get a bunch of different kinds of events. If it only has one, it's going to go ahead and add it here. So query updated is the only event that this fires. And so we are going to update a client state parameter, we're going to update the note query client state parameter and i'm going to switch into data binding and oh come on i was going to show a thing that isn't working with this component oh uh so for most components uh they will you'll see a payload here and then you'll have access to everything in the components payload and i guess pulling back the curtain a little bit to ServiceNow development uh, we have, we're shipping like around 250 to 300 components and all those components are owned by, um, I, I would say 20 or 30 different development teams at ServiceNow. And it is really up to the development team to expose the schema for their components events to UIB and then let UIB pick from it. Uh, and so this team did not expose their schema. So I'll, I'll be looking that up afterwards, but we can still use it. Uh, you can always hard code things in here. So we're going to say that payload.value uh, because we know uh, that payload.value is what it's, what it's giving us from when we looked at the extension. Hey, Brad, for the condition builder, can we set uh, initial condition parameters, like if you want it active to be true to be a default? I'm almost positive, yes. So let's look at the props. And so I think you can pass it in this encoded query. I think this will preset your conditions. Um, so, Thanks, asking for a friend. Yeah, we may, we may end up using this for the lab, but uh, yeah. So I think this will work now, uh, but let's see. All right, uh, we'll go cat is personal. Oh, it did work. Ooh. My little personal. Nice. Drink. Done. Ship it. Ship it, yes. No testing. That's all the testing <laughs> we needed. That is personal. Done. Are you able it works to alternate? On my computer. <laughs> Can you alternate the tiles to be rounded corners and not rounded corners? <laughs> I don't do like that. that. Oh. I'm just kidding. Oh. Um, no. So this that that's actually a good question. Uh, so <laughs> for styling, you can't do any dynamic styling right now. Um, so this is a good. I would love to hear. If you have like real world use cases where, and, and these absolutely exist, um, but if you have real world use cases of where you wanna do dynamic styling like this, where you'd want data to drive the way that your styling works, I'd love to hear like hard real world use case examples for that. Um, so ping me on- Can we start now? What? Yeah. You want me to start now or do you want me to message you after? Yeah, I get to let's, go. let's do it after. Okay, um, I got you. But people in the chat, please message. I'll make sure he gets these. I I, per, I know there are lots of examples. I'm just asking you if if I can come with 50 of them, it's the it, it, it's a good way to, to go to the product teams. I, I could see the background or something being tweaked based on the data. Yeah, I mean, a big one is if you're building out your own list of things and you want to alternate 
like list background colors like gray and white or something yeah. like that that's pretty obvious um so that's that's kind of an accessibility thing i think and Seema and i had the same clients when i was a partner <laughs> <laughs> yes i did build a portal one time i've told, I've told this story before but i built a portal one time it was probably 12 years ago and uh their design guidelines said like the thing had to be 700 pixels wide and somebody was like hey this is only 699 pixels wide they measure like come on does that really matter it uh, matters so it, much it did and we, fixed it. we fixed it that was before i worked at service now it's with Parker. just testing you glad you caught it thanks yeah yeah that's right my favorite was when people would send figma designs to uh service portal builders and it's just like there's no way we're going to recreate the exact same pixels that they have in Figma. Yeah. My favorite is when my junior developers would copy the CSS straight out of Figma and have hard coded boxes in their portals. And I'm like, no, stop. Every single widget or every single thing has its own hard coded CSS values everywhere. Yeah. So I'll, I'll plug knowledge right now. I think, uh, so we have a new, there's like a new design thing happening at this knowledge. I don't know if it's public, so hopefully I didn't spill the beans on anything. Hashtag but, safe harbor. Hashtag safe harbor. One of the things they're doing uh, is they're going to do some sort of session on taking a Figma file and turning it into like a workspace or something. So it's how to go from Figma to UIB and building a thing. Uh, which I, I think is very practical and useful because um, that's how, you know, as developers, that's that's how we get things, right? It's like, here's here's my design. How, how do I take this and actually make something usable out of it? I think it's important to just quickly plug that UI builders not react uh, reactive yet, asterisk safe harbor. So we won't be able to recreate the Figma designs completely before everybody's hopes gets up. Yeah, it's not uh, the new design system is not a uh, pixel perfect design at the, at this point. Yeah. Um, this is what I wanted to accomplish today. I have more work to do for my lab, but here I have a I while we're here, uh, I have a more conceptual thing for my lab. So let's uh, I have uh, these, so all of my notes have different categories. So if we just reload the page, right? So these are all blank, but they all have different categories. I think I can, I think this works. If I go hundred per page. Yeah. Ooh. Right. So we've got, uh, internal meetings, personal customer meetings, and then I have this category picker over here. Um, and I think I, I killed how this works, but I'm trying to figure out how do I, so each of these categories is a sys ID. How do I say, um, like if I wanted three categories, how do I do that in a condition builder? Does that make sense? So if I were to, I need something to where I can like bind data to it, but I can't, I can't like preset the condition builder for multiple categories. I don't know if I you can't do that. is in, uh, uh, is one of. Yeah, is one of is not an option for me. So let, let's uh, take out the conditions. Okay, is one of would show up for a choice list or reference fields? I think you could do yeah. in. I mean, the, the encoding in. question would say in. In could work. Um, why do I? Oh, is this a bug, y'all? I can't get back to the regular data binding. So I clear that out and hit apply. Ah, oh, there we go. That's not the greatest way to do that. Right? So we got cat. It's a reference field. Yeah. Right? And I've got... Yeah. So basically, I could supply here. I could supply Contains. like an array, a list of yeah. sys IDs, but I, I'm not sure how to do multiples. Right. Without, can you build your own... I, I'm trying to do as little scripting as possible. So ultimately, I think I'm going to have to write a script that kind of builds multiple conditions here uh, for each of the sys IDs. So that can be your challenge exercise. For, 
it could be the challenge exercise. I wanted it to work. I wanted it to work earlier than that. But yes. I think I'm going to have to end up scripting this condition anyway if I want to use that condition builder. So we'll probably have to do that either way. Ooh, let's do this though. I have one I more have thing we question. can do. I want to completely derail the segment. I do have a question. If we can't do conditional styling, how did you do the per category colors? Ooh, what a good question. I'm. Uh, do you want to ignore it and do the thing you wanted to do anyway? No, That's totally I'm fair. Yeah, I'm just doing this. Uh, so how did I do that? That's a good question. So I did it because there's this highlighted value component and it has a color property. So this isn't a style, right? So anything in the configure tab uh, is a property on that component itself. So if you're looking at like an icon component, uh, which icon it's showing is a property on the component, it's not a style on the component. So it has a color property and an icon property. So what I have on my uh, category table, I actually have a color field that I'm populating the component with. Ah, so you're just saying it's value. intentionally built that way. Yeah, so the components intentionally. So I couldn't do this if I wanted this component to have like a border. I couldn't do that dynamically because that's just the component styling. But that's a really good question. So on this one, yeah, we're going, we're kind of dot walking all the way down to the display value of the color field. And that's how that works. And is the color field like a string field or is there a color picker field? So there is a color picker field type, Yep. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it didn't quite work with UIB. So I think I have a string field with absolutely zero validation on it. And I'm just <laughs> typing in things like red, green. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so hex or normal. Not even hex, colors. just uh, yeah, plain colors. Color names. I want to try to break that. What instance are you in? Uh, Just it's, curious. It's, the, it's your instance. It's the live instance. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> right. also, it is. Please, please don't z-boot this instance in the next six weeks. That's my, <laughs> We haven't talked about this, but... There's your change it. management. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> verbal on a live team. stream. This is the, how our team's change management works, yeah. Speed run. Uh make brad cry any percent <laughs> i should this isn't backed up at all it should be uh i don't, don't even remember what i was gonna do now. i'm so sorry no it's i this was a good conversation i think the color thing so i i would say uh if you are trying to do something that requires some sort of conditional styling uh, you might look at the overall set of components that are available to you. And there may be a component that has a property that lets you do some styling that's not actual styles, which is what the highlighted value component does. Um, somebody remind me what I said I was going to do. Uh, it was you didn't actually say there. what you yeah, were going to do. You didn't say it. Like, you just started clicking. You got halfway there. It was just Sorry. in my head. It's totally gone. No, I, I actually remembered it for the first time ever. Uh, what I want to do is I want to embed the encoded query. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this very easily, actually. I just rethought it. All right, oh, look at the time. I think we're done. <laughs> time to rate our drinks. All right. Oh, we're... We got out of order. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! I'm drinking a ginger ale. It's a it's a three point five, I guess. What is it about ginger ale that it tastes better on airplanes? Seriously, mm. it's like the best place to drink them. That's I my airplane drink as well. It tastes like bald eagle tears up there. It's really good, and you get it back here. It's like mm, not so much. It tastes yeah. like you know, mom and dad had a party when I was six. Brad? Like, uh, <laughs> Sprite from McDonald's. Is I have. I don't know that this is Bald Eagle Tears uh, level, uh, but it was my IPA. I can't remember what I used to rate things, but we're gonna say four two five with the uh, quarter point bump. Quarter point success factor. We had a success factor. I'll, I'll grant you it that. Was a success. Some. 
Yeah. Four two five in old school live coming happy hour is actually a pretty good score. Yeah. What's the rating system again? Zero to five on quarter points. Zero oh, okay. It's the five. I almost said seven. So I'm not a beer drinker, but I drank this. That's Eight not out a of five. If you like that, you should try Rattlers too. Oh yeah. Rattlers. Or even a little more fruity. Yeah. I will message that to my husband. Thank you very much. Now I'll run into his room and throw it at him. Great idea. I wonder how that will work out for my marriage. <laughs> I was introduced to Rattlers a few years ago in Germany at a dev meetup. I went, oh, these are good. They, they go down way too easy. <laughs> it's like fruit punch of beers. <laughs> how was your water? My water is fine. Uh, it's in a recycled Gatorade bottle. And every time I look at this, there's a little guy on the side who's got his bottle upended like this. But if you look closely, it kind of looks like he's singing karaoke. So that's that's why I it's like a it. sign. <laughs> it's Friday night. I'm singing. Anytime Chuck looks at somebody, it's like oh, that that person could be singing chariot karaoke. <laughs> he's already pulling out the QR code to the instance. <laughs> that's right. We are working on a karaoke plan for knowledge. Stage Can you three. have it on yeah. the last night so I don't lose my voice before my presentations, please? The last night is the party party, like the concert oh. party, pitbull party. There's no pitbull karaoke alternate location. You get up there and sing with pitbull? Ain't no. happening. <laughs> that feels like a thing you should be able to swing, Chuck. Some pitbull yeah. karaoke. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> hey, you guys ready for Sweet Caroline? Let's go. <laughs> no, nah, living on a prayer. We got to reenact K22. <laughs> that was one of life's poorer choices. <laughs> oh, half of us were in The Hague and the half of us were in oh, yeah. New York for that one. All right. Thanks, Brad. That was yeah. great. I like you all. Both of you, Brad, Maria, Gab so Maria Gabrielle is really great about being in the chat answering questions. So thank yes. you for answering all the questions that come through. So, and then Brad, class. Perfect execution of coding while ignoring all the shenanigans that are happening around you. So in a in a yeah, apocalyptic yeah. disaster scenario, I would want you being the one person that codes the the thing that yeah. will save us all. In which the internet is still running and we're using service now. Yep. <laughs> Only minor dog barking this time. That's just a little bit, yeah. And no construction. All right. Ten out of I, ten. Does that officially round out our Washington DC content, Earl? We have one more creator um, toolbox for Creator Studio. Monday, April 1st. On Monday, and that will be the last one. It's not an April Fool's joke either. Mm -hmm. For Creator Studio, wow. Mm -hmm. it was, this was actually supposed to be the last episode of the season. It was actually, but Creator Studio got uh, pushed to next week. So that gets to be the last episode of the season. Uh, but we still have other streams happening. We still have... Uh, other content that we're going to be posting. Um, we put blogs up for every episode that we have of this, uh, these shows and stuff like that. So you can make sure to watch the blog, uh, devlink.sn slash blog. Uh, the, there's like eight links in the description now for next experience stuff. So check those things out. Tune in next week for that creator toolbox episode on Monday. And uh, the Twitch stream is still going to be going on throughout uh, time un into the foreseeable future. So check that out too. Uh, but yeah, that's all. Do you, do you, either of you have any announcements you want to make? So since you allowed me so gracefully, every Wednesday, um, every third Wednesday of the month, we have our next experience Academy where we go over higher level topics, not so much development topics like these, but general next experience UI builder workspaces. We just did our past two episodes that are going to be posted on Monday. And they're going to be about what's new in UI Builder and Next Experience for Washington. So you should totally check those out. Um, we also are doing a lot of labs at Knowledge. So you should check those out. As always, Brad's killer build a killer blank experience uh, labs are awesome. I'm doing one on theming. And I'm doing one on getting started in workspaces for Knowledge. And then one last plug for you and I Builder Live. If you like this kind of vibe, if you like having fun, Come enjoy watching us sweat as we work in UI Builder and teach you something that hopefully we also knew before the episode. But not always. Not sometimes always. It works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Learn right along with us. Also, uh, at Knowledge, not only will we have you and I Builder Live live 
uh, with no, your usual cast and crew. What was that? We got to get the title right. It's live. You and I build her live. Oh, live. Very okay. important. I'm, I'm mixing up live. You and I build her live, and Thank there will you. be live coding happy hour live. Live. So both shows are happening on stage live. So if you want to banter, troll the speakers while you're watching, uh, we would love to have you there at Knowledge if you're attending. Join us in the crowd. I got. I'm coming up with ways to troll uh, Maria, Gabrielle, and Brad while they do the episode, just like how I do in the normal show. Uh, we're coming up with fun, different ways for y'all to interact. So, Wait, did I misread that? I thought it was live coding happy hour. Live. <laughs> <laughs> I am scared, <laughs> or or and rather, then, ha ha, I'm in danger. I'm in danger. We're out of time. One last announcement: uh, Maria, Gabriella, and I are going to be in Denver on April 18th doing an in-person you and I builder live at the Denver developer meetup. So cool. Thank you guys for having us right. and letting us just plug Happy Easter, show. everybody. Bye everybody.